about to happen to you, you leave now. Some consider these traits to be toxic, such as undesirable in the men of today. We consider these traits such as these not only to be desirable, but to be appreciated and celebrated. Welcome to the Toxic Male Appreciation Show, hosted by Armm and La Reina Crior. Welcome to the safe space for the toxic male. Well, hello, hello, hello there, everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creole, and with me, of course, is her, mm, of the Positive Phantom and the Burn Network. How are you doing, my dear? I'm doing great. I mean, like I said, I'm enjoying the summer, Lorena. The weather has been great. It's a little cool, but that's okay. I'm just trying to enjoy it and take every day as it is. I, I don't want the summer to end, Lorena. How how are you today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been a been a long, uh, long working day, long working week, but I am looking forward to the weekend and as always looking forward to toxic male appreciation with you. Ah, oh, I love doing this show with you. We have uh, we have a ton of fun, and you guys, I'm so appreciative that you like our commentary uh, on this uh, on this show because we certainly do have fun. So kick back, relax. This is a toxic male safe zone, mm. and we are happy, happy, happy to have you. So let's see, let's kick off with exactly uh, what we're going to be talking about today. And I honestly had not thought about this until it showed up. Now, granted, I'll, I'll say this before some folks are like, Fox News, ah! <laughs> get the holy water. It's Fox News. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't watch, I don't watch Fox News. It's not one of my, not one of my things to watch. However, a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> so when this article popped up and coincidentally this article popped up around the same time uh as the Barbie movie so I'm not so I'm not surprised so our headline here is experts I'm going to put that in quotes because they never say who the experts are they just say experts cuz it's catchy for the uh for the SEO experts warn of devastating effect as traditional male roles deemed toxic by Hollywood and by media. Yeah, um, this article, my goodness, Lorena, you and I, uh, we both believe that there's no such thing as a toxic male. This is something that was created right. by somebody to explain behavior, I guess, of an individual that they may have witnessed or whatever it was. But, you know, we both know that being uh, toxic has nothing to, to do with being male. They are not inherently related. So, you know, I don't like the term toxic male. I don't believe it's true. We just know that there are toxic people out there. There are abusers, but it's not mm -hmm. because they are male. So, you know, the, the association with toxic and being male, you know, I, it doesn't make any sense to me because I think for the most part, men are fantastic. And um, I think, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to traditional male roles, Lorena, and you and I both have so much to say about this, but we're seeing movies and stories that are incredibly popular showing traditional male roles like extraction, like, you know, Reacher, yes. like uh, Jack Ryan, um, you know, and the list goes on and on and on. I even think RRR shows traditional oh, male roles. Definitely, definitely. That's part of why it was so crazy popular and still is here in, you know, here in America. Certainly. So I, I just really don't, we don't like that term. That's why we appreciate any male. We know this has nothing to do with you being toxic. We just appreciate males here. And that's why we have this show. Uh, but there, it's interesting though, in a sense that I think it's, it's good sometimes for 
concerns of, let's say, some people, and I don't know whether it's the person the, whose picture we're even seeing, but they're concerns about how men are, you know, depicted and treated. And that is a concern. And it's really important because we see a lot of examples of it here in this article. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one more movie to add on to the pile. And I wholeheartedly did not expect this. The new Haunted Mansion movie. Oh, really? I, I was absolutely shocked. You had a man and not only that, but you had a black man. You know, he was portrayed in a loving relationship, um, unfortunately, with his with his late wife, just how agonized he was, you know, over, you know, over that, but yet meets this single mother and her son, of course, they're being haunted, you know, in, in this house. <laughs> and he takes on the role of protector when everybody's all huddling. This is the safest room for us to be in. He's got his bag and he's like, I'm going to go check out what's going on. I'll, you know, I'll be right back. He sees that as his job. He sees it as his job to protect, you know, all the people that are gathered there and especially the little boy that's uh, that's there. And I was shocked. So no matter how not much money that movie makes, having that shown as a positive male, I, I mean, none of, none of the guys in the movie were, uh, were stupid. I mean, they played off of comic relief. I mean, you have Owen Wilson, you know, Zoolander. You, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have comedy and everything, but it's not a how to put it mean spirited type of comedy. It's the strength that they play that he plays. You know, that he plays up to. But yeah, it's not something that we have been seeing. I would say within the past ten years, there's just been this active. At least it seems like to me. Uh, for at least a decade, this active, um, I guess, drumbeat that you would say about traditional masculinity being, quote unquote, toxic. And it's, it, it's so, it's so demeaning, but yet it seems like it's, it's something that Hollywood just cannot get away from or say go back to when it wasn't about toxic whatever. It was about the characters, who they were, uh, traditional traits, even some neo-traditional traits, you know, that were there. But one gender wasn't demonized um, over the other. But I like this byline, this uh, second line here, both men and women suffer mm -hmm. as traditional masculine and feminine values are criticized, experts warned. Yeah, this is a very good, uh, this might be the best uh, line in, to be honest with you, maybe that's why it's at the top of the uh, of the article or the page, um, which is what editors would do, right? They take the best uh, the synopsis of it. And I think there is a good point of that because, um, you know, I don't know, I don't want traditional values to go away. <laughs> I want them to stay around, I, you know, and I, I like men when they're masculine. This is what I want to see. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I seek out. And, you know, I'm a traditional female. I'm certainly very traditional in the sense of how I behave and what I want from life. So um, and I am very sexual. So that is something else true. <laughs> but, you know, I have to put that out there. It's the truth. But I study sex and sexuality. So that's part of it. But, um, you know, I think when when we're looking at this, I, at least from when I'm looking at this line, it is certainly something to think about because, you know, I don't know what what people are doing these days, but from what I can see and from the public's response, many of them want a traditional, you know, values for men and women. And mm -hmm. I think what's interesting is that nobody is perfect and if we're going to believe that um, criticism can't exist, that's, I don't think that's what this is saying. I think what they're saying is if you have a traditional male and, and female values, feminine, masculine values at work, why do they need to be criticized? And so um, there is this desire for some people, not everybody, um, mm -hmm. to associate uh, these traditional values with things being wrong, right or wrong. And that's not the case. People live 
whatever way they want to, and it's their decision. And it, not everything needs to be fixed and not everything is broken and not everybody is perfect. So, you know, I think that one of the interesting things about this is that although the article doesn't necessarily talk about this, mm -hmm. but there is a really good point in the sense of why it's being criticized. And so, mm -hmm. you know, just honestly speaking, you know, if it's being criticized because you don't like it, um, well, then you just don't like it. That's an opinion, but it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. So uh, I, I think that that does come up a lot. And it comes up a lot in what the article kind of mentions, because in the film, you know, of course, it talks about the Barbie movie. And very clearly, the film is full of criticism. But it's full of criticism of the notion of what social justice is and the notion of what misogyny is and misanthropy. And it criticizes a lot of stuff. And it does show a lot of treatment, a lot of behavior that you can call out because you know it's wrong behavior. It's not nice to treat people, especially men, like they're not smart and they're not important. And we see that. And it is very interesting that they chose to show that very specifically in Barbie land. So mm -hmm. I think that that screams volumes. I think it's telling us, and obviously um, anybody, well, maybe not to everybody, but I, I think it's telling us that's not right. <laughs> you can't go ahead and treat somebody like this. And so, no. you know, you start off with this, what looks like a perfect situation. And you realize this isn't so nice. This isn't cool. Um, things do need to change. There has to be some change going on, even though, um, it's great to live in a, a be the be in charge of everything and say that it has to be all women. Um, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't be one hundred percent in charge and then say, "Well, I value my partner." When you, when you're like, "Well, I don't even love this guy," you know, like it's 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 a very slippery slope in the film that we see of mm -hmm. what happens. And and I think it was it was very bold to go ahead and put forward characters who are not perfect. Uh, you know, right. Like, I think that that was something that didn't, ha you know, you don't have to do that when you're writing a script, but it was clearly placed so you could see, you knew, we all knew it was wrong. And I'm like, that's, that's kind of cold. That's not cool. No, it's really, it's really not. And when I was watching the film, I kept having flashbacks to Toy Story 3, which <laughs> is like my second favorite Toy Story movie. And you had a Barbie and Ken, um, storyline that was going on you know ken was just the, you know the toys made fun of him saying you know you're a girl's toy and he's like i'm not a girl's toy i'm not i'm not <laughs> i'm really not a girl's toy i'm not you know uh but his relationship with with you know with barbie he's just like this is gonna be a great place you know such a happening yeah. place and they were both so supportive and he was encouraging you know a barbie to like raise her voice against the tyranny of uh you know lots of bear <laughs> But that's what they did. And in the end, they had this daycare that they were running together. But it was a very positive mm -hmm. relationship between the two of them. She didn't treat him as if he was disposable. She treated him as she would all of the other toys. Of course, this is the notion for people who haven't seen the film, is that the toys are there for the kid. So they pretty much have their own society around taking care of each other and making sure they're there for that particular uh for that particular kid so that relationship was much different it was much more positive you know barbie had a strong voice talking about you know you need to represent you know the consent of the governed you know and that speech was freaking, you know, it was, ab it was absolutely amazing. I loved it, but it was a totally different, it was a totally different thing. There wasn't any emasculation that, you know, that was done. Ken was a very manly doll and he did, you know, manly, uh, manly things. They just kind of jokingly ribbed him like, uh, you know, you can't hang out with the army men over here because you're a girl's toy. <laughs> I think that, you know, it's not going to, this, the Barbie, let's say, not the Toy Story Barbie, the, the Barbie in Barbie is not going to be interpreted um, that as easily, let's say, the Toy Story Barbie can be interpreted for many people because um, 
the writer chose to put in social issues. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to see where Barbie is not, she's not doing the right things. And I also, um, at least that's how I interpret it. But one thing that I noticed, um, and, and I was kind of, I kind of thought that this was also interesting was that, um, you know, it takes digs at a different groups. It takes digs at corporate America. It takes digs at people who like Jane Austen. You know, like you can go down the list of, mm -hmm. you know, there's even a scene where even I, um, I, even I realized that, um, you know, now it's going to, going to take digs at stereotypes. Of course, you know, she's called stereotypical Barbie and he's stereotypical mm -hmm. man, right? So she represents what you would call a stereotypical female who may be a social justice warrior, more or less. And, you know, she gets involved with a guy who's just incredibly nice and is just putting up with a lot of what's been going on till he's like, enough. You know, this is, I, <laughs> I love how you put that. <laughs> because, and you know why? Because I think he realized, let's say, you know, she wasn't treating him right. She were, she apologizes to him at the end. And you realize, you know, he, she's been, and I'm not going to say that it's been uh, 100% her fault, but she's kind of led him on a long time. And it's not till the end of the film where she's like, I don't really actually care about you after all. Sorry. You know, and I thought to myself, that's not how you treat people. No. Um, but she had to correct herself. She had to jump away from all this because it was wrong. And they wanted you to see that. They wanted you to see a lot of things in here. Men aren't supposed to be vilified. And there's even a scene where um, uh, Americus uh, and her daughter decide to go to Barbie land. And they say, well, should we tell dad? And if you're mm -hmm. involved with somebody, your spouse, that's the first person you tell before you go anywhere. You know, it's like, I'm going to be late tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want anything? You're like, that's the that's your go-to text person. Like, it's like, what are you up to? Nothing. You know, like that. Yeah, you, yeah. you were doing that with them. So I'm supposed to believe that they go to Barbie land and they don't even ask the dad who seems really engrossed in their, in the family. You know, like he's, he loves his family. It's like, at least text him, honey, is it all right if we go to Barbie land? He would probably be like, yeah, sure. Enjoy your shopping spree. Like he wouldn't mm -hmm. know what it was. Yeah. Like, oh, this must be a new, you know, a new, uh, new shop at the mall. Yeah. But the notion, I even looked at that and I thought men are you know like for a long time men have been saying things like well this is what we want from women and and a lot of times that message isn't coming through and i think that in this movie a lot of it is like that the notion that you that even to put forward that you could trick a guy into like men aren't like that and so i thought it was interesting that they decided that's the course of action gee, this behavior is terrible. She cannot stay in Barbie land if she keeps doing stuff like this. She needs to go and become a better person somewhere else. But honestly, that behavior, we're seeing it. We're witnessing it. We're witnessing it in Hollywood itself. We're witnessing it. You know, this film is showing us examples. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. I don't believe that Barbie, if she came into life, she would really treat Ken like that. And honestly, if Ken wanted to come to my house, he's welcome anytime. Yeah. But <laughs> just don't throw out my clothes. We, we that's fight. Oh, that <laughs> That was, yeah, it's over. It was laugh so hard at that darn scene. <laughs> but I think that they needed to show this stuff because there's been a lot of vilification of men and we needed to see it in, in the simplest manner possible. But at the same time, there's a lot of things in the movie that are enjoyable that are digs at us as well. So, so I think, I think that looking at this, clearly this is a movie that's on its way to making a billion dollars Oh yeah, and and the men are being pushed around in it. It's the truth. Um, that's what we're seeing, and it, and I hope that people, when they watch it, I don't know if this is what they get from it, or see this and like that's not right. That's why she has to stop and leave Barbie Land and figure out. You know, I'm I'm I can't keep treating guys like this. I even criticize like when they go back and she's like, we got to take Barbie Land back, and I'm like, well, you need to. Not that they had to, but like some of the mm -hmm. some of the men could be like you know, ruling with them versus, you know, like, well, it all has to be all women. We all, we solved that problem already. Everything has to be women, right? We solved that. Guess what? That's not the answer. We have to live with men. We have to live with them. So the part where Ken goes off and discovers that he has the patriarchy. Some, yeah. He's got some cojones now. He's, you know, he's got some pull. He's, he always had a game, but the part where he discovers it and, and look at how handsome, um, 
he looks with his cowboy outfit on. He looks like some country singing star, doesn't he? Yes, there was a country western Ken. I do remember that particular uh that particular doll that uh, that they came out with. But uh, you were you were absolutely right what some people overlook. And I've seen some male reviewers overlook overlook this. I don't know if it's conditioning or what. But with the way that the Kens were treated, with the way that men were treated, it's like yes. they're either dumb puppies, you know, maybe Barbie will pick me. Hi, Barbie, pick me, pick me. They're basically pick me guys. Or it swings completely the other way where they're shown as basically tyrants taking over Barbie land, mm -hmm. you know, bamboozling, you know, the women into forgetting who they are and that their job is, you know, to just basically serve, you know, serve them. I'm just like, well, how the heck did that, you know, how did that work? That's not, that's not what, uh, that's not what really happens. And I would say even in the mind of a child, I don't really see that happening. If anybody has ever watched girls play with Barbies, or even if boys try to encroach in, it's just like, why are you here? <laughs> we have rules here. There's things that you can't do here. But if you agree to them, okay, you know, we're, you know, yeah. we're, uh, we're fine. But it's not like, you know, we're, we're done with you. Or, you know, you just... No, we're not. Uh, we need you there. Like you need to be physically. We actually want them there, and yeah, we want them in cool outfits. But I'm sorry, guys. We do. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we do. We we want you in cool outfits. We want you with you know good manners. You know, yeah. we want you. You know, bring stuff. You know, bring stuff to the party. It was always fun, even in the advertisements. Ken and his friends are showing up to the party. Oh, Yay! We can't yeah. have a party. You yeah. know, without without you know without uh without Ken, it wasn't like oh god, and then, you know the you know the patriarchy, the patriarchy is here. So I know when I saw that, even at one point, it was funny because it was funny with Ken discovering the patriarchy, and it's just like there's this power and respect they didn't have before. But then it just goes to just basically show that men are just going to take over and screw up stuff. So, you know, we'll just keep them in their place and bring women back into power. And it's just like that. That's that's when the film went from funny to. Is this really is this really where you're where you're going, where you're going with this? And I'm going to kind of read this. I'm um, not going to. I am read this paragraph here. Portrayal of men in the Barbie movie is just one example of this. And this is what they're talking about. I'm going to need to back up here a little more because friends were like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> so Josh, Senator Josh Hawley, he's a Republican from Missouri. He's been vocal about this. I don't really know about him that much. But he says, and I'm going to purposely change a word in here um, okay. to be not only just to be fair, but to be accurate. I just think that the message that the progressive... Yes. Progressives, progressive mm -hmm. Hollywood mm -hmm. has sent men in this country for decades now that they're trash. I mean, that's a literal quote from a progressive professor. Men are trash, Hawley said. I think too many men have heard that message for too long and believed it in one form or another, he added. Now, I'll ask you, how many times have you seen movies or television shows where it's basically... Uh, Men are trash. It's either the controlling men or it's the stupid husband, you know, who can't seem to do anything without his wife doing stuff, uh, doing stuff for him. Commercials that show men as just 100% inept. You have people on social media who constantly want to blame the patriarchy, blame men. The world will be better, you know, um, Without, you know, without men, I was even in one uh, Disney group temporarily because then I had to leave, this, leave it on Facebook where some lady said, oh, you know, my makeup is running and it's hot and, you know, makeup just had to be invented by a man. I said, excuse me? It's not the fault of men that you haven't figured out how to weatherproof your makeup. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. It's, it's just like, I just, I just don't get that. And when, and another one of the things about this film is, and I said it repeatedly, your self-esteem is not someone else's problem. 
-hmm. And that was one of the most insulting things. Like women can't take control of their own destiny without blaming men about it. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think it came, you know, we're looking, we know that there are, let's say progressives who, who believe this firmly and we see that it, it doesn't work. You know, even let's say in the situation where supposedly they fix the problem again and the Barbies take over, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel good, does it? No, it doesn't feel good at uh, at all. And this next paragraph basically explains it. it. Says it's pretty clear that the media views masculinity in only two ways: stupid or toxic. Binary choices, nothing in between. Mm -hmm. Comedian Tim Young told Fox News Digital, like Barbie land, the concept of equality between men and women, according to the media, is fictional. And where there could be a chance to have everyone get along, their spin on things is to be divisive and put down men. Yeah, it was, I think it was quite quite a very strong criticism on what we're seeing proponents saying and is the solution. Um, and it's very clear here, although, I, and I'm still not quite sure why they did this, uh, but I've heard, I've heard some people say that in the beginning, let's say uh, the dolls don't have, you know, they, they don't have proper brains. They're not fully developed. And then by mm -hmm. the time she walks away from, from Ken, she's fully developed. She can't be in Barbie land anymore because it's not a place of equality. But to be honest with you, I think a lot of what we see um, is that's also a fantasy of getting to perfect equality. So it's, I don't believe that's ever going to happen. You know, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but I don't believe that's ever going to happen. I think there's always going to be give and take. And, you know, whether you're with a partner or not, or whether you're at work or not, there's always going to be people who do more and more at sometimes and less at others. And that's just mm -hmm. normal human life. The world is not a 100% 50-50 way. So let's just go ahead and give credit to men for doing the stuff that we know they do that, that I'm not going to do and vice versa, the stuff that I'm going to do that they may not do. And that's just, I think that might've been realistic. I don't know whether it would have been realistic to show you know, them say, her, Barbie say, yeah, maybe I ought to give Ken a job or whatever. That just wasn't her reality in that world. And that world was sort of like, you know, the metaphor for the perfect female led world mm -hmm. you know, where every day is a great day. I'm living my best. This is my best life ever. This is I'm living my best life ever. And it's like, no, you're not. You're living in a mm -hmm. fantasy world where you're in charge. But, you know, in actuality, you're you're ignoring someone who would be very important in your life or even everybody else's wishes. You know, you could even go so far as to say that the Barbies just think about themselves and maybe even the stereotypical Barbie thinks about herself more than the weird Barbie. You know, like we could, we could go into different layers of it, but we are seeing this perpetuate itself as a common trope about why, uh, you know, why men are being vilified. And I think what's even more interesting about it, and they didn't have to do this. Like I, I thought about, you know, um, the Ken part a lot. And I said, you know, they could have done the vilification without Ken. But to be honest with you, um, I wondered for a while, you know, what Ken was going to do. And if you notice, which is very interesting, is that when she runs away from Barbie land the first time, he goes with her. Mm -hmm. he have to go with her. But he goes with her. He's going with her as a traditional male to make sure she's safe. Exactly. Exactly. Then he went to the point where he had to still wear in her car. <laughs> and you know something? I've seen people do this. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. This is we're not saying that. I'm just saying that I have observed, you know, couples where one person says, I'm gonna go off on my own, person's like, I just want to follow them to make sure they're safe. I have seen men do this, and it's not stalkerish, they just want to make sure the person gets no, it's just like I want to make sure, you know, I want to make sure you're okay. Now they didn't have to show that, but they show that, and I thought to myself, why show it? I'm like they're making a point here. Ken does not care. You know, it's, it is true that Barbie's rejecting him and has rejected him a few times and even kisses her after he, she rejects him, but he's always going to love her. So, so that's fine. You know, like it's okay. This is going to happen. You know, he's, he's in love with her. Maybe one day she'll be good enough for him. Um, if you know what I mean, like she'll mm -hmm. be a good enough person for him, but yeah. right now, you know, 
you know, she's just not into this. And I really took, looked at their relationship as if she was leading him on. And someone had said, well, you know, when they, in the beginning, they said something about how um, it was my pseudo on again, off again, something boyfriend. And I said, no, I'm not, I understand that explanation, but I'm not buying it because if we think about this, Lorena, how many times have you seen situations where, or at least in movies where the guy comes over, it's the girl's boyfriend and yeah, I am reaching here. And he's like, well, I want to spend the night. Yes, I am reaching. I know I am. But he okay. wants to spend the night. And she's like, well, I don't know. I'm not ready. for." I'm like, what? You know why he's there. You invited him over. Men need intimacy too. He's not just there to hang out. And they're like, what are we going to do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, no, you know what's going to eventually happen. He kisses her at the end because he wants to be with her. And I, I think for a long time, another thing that this film addresses is that men need intimacy. And a lot of times they're not listening to what women are saying. It's like you invite somebody over to your house or he's coming over. You know, it's like, don't mm -hmm. be like, yeah, we're just going to be friends. So I'm just going to sit here, even though I know you're in love with me. She knew he loved her. You know, like it's, it is kind of, you know, I think it says a, a lot in a sense. And I don't believe that she should be by herself. So as far as- Yeah, I, I got a big problem with that. Because come actually, on now, Barbie actually, and Ken. <laughs> I was surprised at how many people, especially men, said they should have been together. And I'm like, oh, my God, these guys are romantic. They want them to be. And, of course, it's Margot Robbie. So, you know, like, of course. But, you know, for when a man is in love, his girlfriend is like Margot Robbie to him. So this mm -hmm. is, you know, this is the conceptualization, conceptualization of it. And when a woman is in love, her boyfriend is like, you know, um, uh, I can't remember this actor's name all of a sudden, but um, it's like him, you know, like he, you know, your, your man looks like that. So, you know, I, I thought it was a very interesting concept in the sense of um, nobody wants to end up alone and yet she ends up alone. Yeah. yeah. I did. So, but think about all people like, oh, you're better off alone. You don't need men. You can do it alone. It's like, nobody wants to do it alone. Don't you get that? And it's like, and it, it's kind of like a glaring message. It's like, well, look what you got. You're by yourself. Congratulations. Yeah. You're by yourself. You're alone. And, you know, and you're miserable. Now I tell people, I see people that are like, well, I don't need a man. I'm like, I want to put it to like this. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want one but mm -hmm. not necessarily need one. That's a different attitude to have because mm -hmm. you do have to be happy and content with yourself, which is something that they started to do and then went off track with be happy. But if you get the guy and y'all are together and everything is great, there's nothing wrong with that. And for generations, that's what, you know, playing with the Barbie dolls was like, because why freaking have a Ken doll? Why have a Ken doll at all? But that's why he's there. And it's just, it, it sent, this movie just sent the wrong message that, that way, that basically men, you know, eh, you're not worth being, you're not worth being with. Because how many action movies have we seen where at the end, the hero saves the day, and gets the girl <laughs> mm -hmm. straight I, up front with it gets that, the girl if that happened at the end i think people would have a very different opinion about the film but um you know as far as i'm from what i'm looking at it just kind of like when she's dancing and she says i think about dying and and it's like you start to realize that this what we're seeing her life on the outside is not at all what she's feeling in the inside. She knows this stuff is wrong and that the way people are being treated is wrong. So mm -hmm. this is something that I think that even if you get everything, you know, served to you on a silver platter and you have everything you could possibly desire, even if you have all those things and you still treat people like shit, there's going to be, your life is not going to be great. You know, it's like, you can't just go ahead and, and behave like that and think your life is going to be golden. And you can clearly see it mm -hmm. wasn't golden for her. It's mm -hmm. obvious. There were a lot of wrong things. All, all, all the perfection in her life didn't really mean mm -hmm. anything to her at all. So, so no. I think that you know, of course, it's you know, it's a doll, but I think it does represent a lot of these simple solutions that people throw forward um, about how well you know it's their fault and they're to blame, and it isn't. It's not their fault. No, it's not. It's not always. It's not always their. It's not always their fault. And again, that. 
that te- that comes back to like the personal responsibility. You want to blame men for everything. I had an argument with a colleague like years ago where she's like, men make less money than women. I said, well, then how come this place isn't stacked full of women? If we don't make as much, that means we're cheaper. So hence they would hire, you know, more, you know, more of us. And I was just like, well, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I don't. I said, I know for a fact there's men in this particular company that make less than I do. She's like, well, maybe for you. I said, yeah, because you don't know how to negotiate. So instead of sitting there complaining about supposedly how much less money, you know, women make, you don't want to take the initiative to get, you know, to get what, uh, to get what you deserve. But to get to this uh, other, these last two paragraphs before I show you something really interesting. The funny thing is, they'll be also be the first to scream that you're a misogynist or toxically masculine. Remember that if you point out that they hate men in the Barbie movie, there's no such thing as Miss Andre to them. Young continued. <laughs> it's really <laughs> in this film, like if they're showing you examples of what they're, you know, the ladies are not doing right and how poorly they're treating these incredibly attractive men, these incredibly attractive, I'm sorry. Very much so. Super hot men. I would be like, oh my God, we're so lucky. (laughs) It's just, it's just like, don't you want to have these hot looking dudes around your house all the time? You know, hey, come over, I'm having another party. Oh, I'm yes. Having, I'm we... having I'm having another, you know, I'm having another party. Uh, this thing about the way they craft it, it's as if there's no such thing as misandry, which is the flip side of uh, of misogyny. Mm-hmm. And I noticed there's a, there's different. I want to say there is there is like an age definition in this yeah. where you have the ones that are older who can see exactly what this is, even though it's a comedy you still see it and it's not 100% addressed. And then you have a generation who have been told for years that everything is the fault of the patriarchy. You can treat men like crap, it's okay. They deserve it. They're toxic men. They deserve for you to treat them however way that you want to treat them. Don't think about their feelings um, and just do what you want. And that's in abject opposition to, I'll say, films and television, which would show relationships where it's just basically treat the other person as if you would want to be treated. And when you don't, here are the consequences that what happens. And yeah, everybody's human and they screw up. But if you come back to make things right, that's what we, that's what we love. And there wasn't that make things right that was there and it's unfortunate that people don't uh don't really see it i know one uh commentator i'm forgetting who it was who said you know why are women seeing this movie where it's blatant misandry in it and i said well number one it was marketed brilliantly what we saw wasn't really what we got in the film so you really can't blame people for when they saw the film that they didn't expect, they didn't expect that. And then the generation that this was truly marketed to, I'll say truly, cause it's kind of like a Star Wars thing, throw out the member berries, bring in, you know, the core fans, but it's really made for this other niche group yes. um, of young women that I really feel very, 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 very sorry for. It's uh, it's dysfunctional and and again, it's it doesn't, put an emphasis on personal responsibility when interacting with the opposite sex. That's interesting. I thought it was showing examples of really what you shouldn't be doing, but um, you know, I can see it go both ways. And a lot of people have said, you know, different things and called it uh, understood a different way. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I really do think that it's, I really do think that the, you can't have your cake and eat it too message uh, is the take home because um, in the story, you know, there are parts where they, you know, they they actually say something like, um, 
are you sitting at home watching uh, episodes of Jane Austen? You know, and I'm like, that's a dig towards women who, like myself, who do stuff like this. Or, yeah. So there are a lot of subtle, the, the America's rant is in there. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's also in there. And I felt like they should have had a rant like that for Ken. But um, certainly the biggest dig is the fact that Barbie does, is alone. That's the biggest dig. Congratulations. You're alone. How do you like your loneliness? Mm -hmm. You know, I hope you enjoy yourself because you're, there's nobody there to love you. So that's how I kind of looked at this. And, you know, it's like, if you decide that that's how you're going to be, and this is the, the lifestyle you're going to choose, the, the methodology, the beliefs that you have in your life, that you mm -hmm. don't need anybody, that, you know, you can do it on your own. And that, you know, let's say if you're not a woman and it's not worthwhile even looking at, that might be where you end up. So that's how I looked at this film. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to be alone. <laughs> no, I don't want to be alone being eaten by my cats. I mean, there's, there's a difference I'm between. There was a thing in it. I'm surprised there wasn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised too. That actually probably would have been funny to have you know, Barbie's uh, Barbie's cat in it. It kind of reminds, it's just listen to what you were saying. It, it reminds me of um, something that my Nana had said, God rest her soul. She was, she was married, got a de facto divorce. Her and her husband, they were not very good for each other, but she had plenty of boyfriends. Mm-hmm. She had plenty of boyfriends and she was not a spring chicken when it was time. I'm like, who the heck are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here to see. I'm here to see so and so. I'm like, who? Yeah. No, really. And but she mm -hmm. was just like, you know what? I I'm alone because I choose to be, but it's not because I hate men. She's mm -hmm. like, I have standards. That's just it. I have standards. If you don't, if you do not meet those standards you do not get to be in my presence and men love standards get some is what she was what she would what she would what she would say but that's a totally different mm -hmm. um totally different mindset coming from that way of you know i'm alone not because i'm just want to be miserable and I hate men it's just like you know it just happens to be that this is what it is right now but you know I'm open to that you know I'm open to being loved I'm open to having a relationship and making connections with people but it's just like you know if I'm by myself I'm by myself and I'm, I'm happy Barbie was just freaking miserable <laughs> it was miserable and another kind of interesting uh, part of the movie was when she went to the high school and she sees the girl there and you know they're sitting at their table and they're like oh you represent this and I'm like Barbie doesn't represent any of those things but you see that, mm -hmm. that comment that she made at the table is exactly the type of stuff you would hear from somebody who doesn't know the history of Barbie which many of them don't know the history of what they're talking about yeah they'll spurt out stuff you know obviously no one is saying anybody should behave like that or be rude to somebody but we see people writing articles like that and you know saying this is the first time we've ever seen you know this ever meanwhile you're like no i think you even had a post where it's like no barbie's had uh, uh there was a black barbie in the 70s I think it was yes and then somebody had to correct me and say actually it was the 60s i'm like well no you're <laughs> it was close. It was 19 i think the one you were thinking about was the 1972 one which was this like there was a special barbie and she looked ah. like a she was spectacular a black barbie and she was like the mm -hmm. most incredible looking barbie you've ever seen she looked like a two or three hundred dollar doll and they did have some other models of barbie that were black as well prior to that mm -hmm. but this one was like they said this was the very first kind of original looking black barbie and it was a 1972 version she looked like a model from the 1970s she was like yes was with like, the was, fabulous disco yes yes, yes yes that's the one but the, the the conversation of that young girl saying that Barbie represents, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is 2023. Barbie has like every look under the sun. Oh, you God, need Barbie yes. in, you know, this way? Well, they've got it. Oh, pregnant Barbie? Mm-hmm. Check. Uh, what kind of Barbie? Mm-hmm. Got it. No, there. she exists every, you know, creation under the sun. So it's, she doesn't know what she's talking about. But that's exactly a dig at people who just are, you know, they know the history you know, they're telling us it's the first time ever. Um, 
Yeah, everything exists for the first time when uh, when they're alive. And you find it interesting how the one girl next to her is like, well, I like Barbie. And they gave her the look of death. Now that's that one is the is the writer herself saying, I know you're saying that you hate Barbie, but I love her. I love her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think so it's do. So that's why I kind of looked at it as that that point of view because they they're doing both. Sometimes a third one, another layer that I think men can see different layers in this film. And this may I'm just going to be honest. This film may be like the most repulsive film to men. Like I've heard some men say, "I can't watch this," and I'm like, "What's wrong?" He's mm-hmm. like, "It's Barbie," and I'm like, "Yeah," and they're like, "I, I can't." I'm like, "Marvel Robbie's in it." They're like, "I don't care." So for <laughs> some, I get it. Like for some people, it's like, no. No, you know, like they, this is, this is, they're not ever going to watch this, but for God bless them for, if they did watch it, um, uh, God bless you. Like if you didn't <laughs> want to watch this film and you went with your daughters and your, you know, whoever you, God bless you men. See, this is the type of thing that we have to thank men for doing. Cause you know, you saw those videos of the men dressed up in pink with their daughters going to the movie and they didn't have to do that stuff, but they did it. They did it. So that, that does say a lot. <laughs> For uh, for but then there were there. Were, what about the the comments, uh, Lorena, when um, Ken is uh, he, he he discovers the patriarchy and he sees the jeep. He doesn't know what it's called. He's like, I don't know what that is, but I know I want one. Want it? <laughs> I that part. It's like I I laughed. I thought mm-hmm. that was I thought that was. Funny. I wasn't expecting to see you know that those sorts of things in the film. Because, you know, there are many layers. There's even probably things in it that I didn't even notice that men will go like, oh, yeah, 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 and that and that. So I, I you know, I, I was like, yeah, there's a lot of things. She's been watching what's been going on in social media, in articles, in things. And she's saying, I got to put all this stuff in this film. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Mm. At least that's how I, that's what I think she did. That's what I think that Greta did. She, she took all these things. She especially wanted to dig, make a dig at social justice, at social warriors. Like this was a big dig at what, at their perception of what the perfect world should be. What would it look mm. like? Well, obviously Barbie would be the one who'd be in that perfect world, you know, but in order to have to be the ruler, you got to, it's going to be oppressing somebody else. And that's what we saw. Um, at yeah. least that's how I interpreted it. Yeah, I don't know if I would give her that much benefit of the doubt, but that's just 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 me me watching the movie. I know weird. that I know that it was just like okay, yeah. that was weird. I don't like that. Okay, that was flipping funny. Okay, that's funny. Okay, that's funny. And then reached a point in the third act where it's just like You're it's like, that's it. it's not. <laughs> it's like as I said, it's just not. It's not funny. It's it's like it's not funny and. If I had brought my daughter to to this particular film, we would have to have a discussion afterwards just because there's certain behaviors that I see in it that it's like, okay, we need to talk about it, find out, you know, where where your head, where your head is, uh, where your head is at. Because even the father in this film, and I didn't and I don't know why they did this. I hated that they did this. They made him just inept. He mm-hmm. couldn't learn Spanish. I mean, it's not like he was trying to learn it and trying and trying and like, yeah, you know, I'm working, working on it. You know, I'm trying to trying to learn how to do it. Uh, even to him, not just not knowing where he was going, it was it was just again yet another um, yet another stereotype, and it's kind of like how they how they did this. It's like stupid. Or toxic. You had Ken kind of acted stupid and he was toxic. The father wasn't quote unquote toxic, but he just seems so freaking incompetent. Class Second class citizen, when he said something, the daughter was like, Oh, that's so cultural appropriation. I'm like, Do, you, know, really, I'm like, no, not. do you really need that? And it's then awkward. talking about smallpox. And I'm just like, why is this in here? And this is why, this is the part that I didn't Greta for. It's just like, there's a point. When you start getting too political on one side, then that's when you lose the portion of your audience that's been giving you the benefit of the doubt um, with this, you know, with this particular film. Like I've told people, they're like, oh, well, it's woke. I don't want to watch it. I said, well, here's my thing. If it is quote unquote woke or activist entertainment, if it is actually entertaining, I don't have a problem with that. But when it stops being entertaining and you start preaching to me, 
it's just like, I can't, you know, it's, I just, I just cannot, it's just like, I just can't, I just can't hang with it. And I'm actually going to flip over to this article because it's kind of funny. This was written in 2011. Mm -hmm. The depressing depiction of men in the media. Okay. So this is like what? 12, 12, maybe 12, 12. Yeah. About 12 years, about 12 years ago, mm -hmm. 12 years ago. And okay, so I wasn't too off. I said a decade, but uh, yeah, in this episode, she talks about like all that, oh God, I remember these shows, like Different Strokes, Good Times, Cosby Show, um, educational cartoons. And there's, she's just in this movie talking about, not in this movie, excuse me, Lord. Even, I'm even commercials. Even commercials. And she's talking about her, how she and her brother just loved watching that you know, the positive depictions, you know, of, uh, of men, but of late, we're not, we'll say of late for them. And this is on the good men project, which is actually a, uh, a good, uh, let's see, it's actually a really good, uh, really good site, really good site. So let's see. Here's the thing, and this is this is the part that I want to that I want to highlight and kind of like to close the show talking about. She says, "I'm tired of Hollywood trying to sell me the con on the concept of lovable idiots. I am disheartened by the ubiquitous content that tears men down. I love filling my life with laughter. However, why are my current content choices trying to get me to laugh at a?" Reduced version of men. Why is Hollywood trying to get me to focus on the broken down allegorical version of who they think my husband is? Obviously, they don't know my husband. <laughs> yeah. And they're not listening to what men have to say either. So that is incredibly significant. Um, we're seeing these broken down uh, versions of men, but we're also hearing um, comments about them that imply that they're broken. I think um, someone showed something uh, the other day where uh, a woman says something, well, you know, like never send a man to do a woman's job or something like that. And it, it wasn't meant, it was meant it, as an insult because, you know, all of a sudden, you know, she's there, she's going to clean up the mess that mm -hmm. he made and, you know, nothing would happen if she were not there. But I think it was an article, I think fairly recently where they, they looked at Thor, they looked at a, a bunch of other, um, uh, you know, the Marvels um, and a bunch of other MCU things where there are lines in there where you really are seeing and that it's not even a lovable idiot, just idiot in general. Yeah. Thor, the love and thunder. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. I did him a boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it is a huge problem. And I, I don't know. Um, you know, there since I'm assuming there's going to be a second Barbie film, there will be. There will be several more, yes. <laughs> um, I'm wondering what we're going to see next. But certainly, um, it's not the right way to treat men. And, you know, that needs to change. And men need to be... I'm glad the senator said something because it is bothering him. And, you know, men have been telling us time and time again, it's like they don't deserve this type of, you know... Um, representation and, and to be written this way you know the the movies that we love don't really have men written that way so um mm -hmm. so that is true too absolutely and another thing uh interesting point to bring up i you know we watch indian movies yeah. i love watching k-dramas yes and here's an interesting thing the barbie movie did not do very well at all in South Korea. And I'm 100 percent understand uh understand why. And it was banned in Vietnam as well. Yes. Yeah. Supposedly because of the uh because of the uh hold on a second, I'm trying to get this article up. Uh, because Lord, and I just lost my train of thought. Wow, that's embarrassing. Map, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that might be the only reason. That that's possibly true, and I think it had a lot to do with one of the characters who was obviously uh, someone that they feel is not 
or I've heard them say that they didn't feel he was attractive. And, you know, that right away could have been like, oh, he's in it, forget it. We may not want to see it. It's possible. I'm not saying that's the reason, but I suspect that had something to do with it. It could be because, um, one, if you ever watch any K-dramas, um, people are, how would I put this? They are vulgarly attractive. I mean, it oh, is stunning. They're stunning. It, it is absolutely stunning. They hire hot people, except mm -hmm. if it's an elderly role. Then that's a little different. But you always do have that, you know, one where they, they're they're still styling. Oh shoot, they the men look like oh my god. I can't even. It's it's I, flipping. Look at them. <laughs> They're hot. They all look hot. The women look hot. They've yeah. got on the best stuff. I mean, this is this is what they do, and they do not demonize men no. or minimize femininity. If anything, it is amped up to an eleven, and they do not take it very lightly. If it's just like okay, we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna trash then this movie, or give the impression that men are being disrespected and women are acting as if they do not need uh need men and the reason why I'm bringing this up why it's so important there is so much foreign content that is becoming popular in the U S and Netflix is spending a ton of money for more you know. K dramas, India movies, um, independent movies, things like that. And people flock to them because there are these traditional um, values. I'll put it this way traditional values, but even though they're updated for today and there's a little, there's some modernization going on at the crux of it, you do not have. Um, this demonization of men, this, you know, demonization of femininity, um, that is still there. And that is why people are flocking to it and why it's not surprising that uh, Barbie didn't go over well. It's not Doria. And a lot of the issues that are addressed in the Barbie movie aren't a thing over there. Like they don't understand. Exactly. All those, the social issues, social justice warriors stuff. That's not mm -mm. like white savior issues none of that stuff means anything to them so they're probably watching that being very perplexed like what are we supposed to be seeing um they don't i don't see why they would have any interest they probably just be like yeah it's okay it, i don't understand most of what's in it mm -hmm. but only yeah. in the united states maybe and maybe the uk kind of get it but um it yeah it's it's not gonna be even understood i i would go so far as to say that it's not even going to be understood Okay. No, it's not. Uh, I remember one time we did uh, our toxic male appreciation show about. Um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting which art, which actor it was. I actually think we were talking in general about the movie RRR, yeah. and how many of our Indian viewers were like, "Toxic? What? Yeah. I don't what? America's so weird." We're like, "Yes, it's progressive," which is why. I, so many of us are just like crazily, you know, embracing um, Indian films, especially Southeast, uh, South, uh, South Indian films for that very reason. But just the incredulity of like, what? I and even in anime, it's just like, yes, Man, that, you don't see that in anime. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a thing. And um, yeah. It's it's nuts. It's nuts that they're trying to do this. I mean, I I still think that a lot of the um, of what we're hearing, and, and this may not be true. This is no basis for this, but um, we had heard, or at least uh, when we were playing uh, Hogwarts Legacy, that uh, a bunch of people who wanted to play it had to hide that they were playing it, and mm -hmm. that's the type of society that we have now. I think, and that table where the girl says she she's the one she didn't hide that she loved Barbie. She told everybody, but. The daughter obviously loved Barbie and she was saying those things, but she wasn't telling how she honestly felt. And I think mm -hmm. we have a good portion of people like that who who fit into that category as well. So, you know, they're faking it. 
And they, we know yeah. what they're thinking because we've seen the articles. We've seen people like, I want to play Hogwarts Legacy, but I don't want all of my friends to hate me. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, they're not your friends. No. Like, no. <laughs> they're, they're not. You should, you should be empowered yeah. to be who you want to be and do what you want to do. And that's what Barbie originally was about. I can be anything, have the confidence to be whatever it is that I wanted it to be, or I wanted to be, and not making other people patriarchy than whoever responsible for your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So I hope, and I am hoping, I mean, not to say that the writer strike isn't bad because uh, because it is for a lot of folks out there and the actor yes. strike that's going on but perhaps one of the corrective measures that will be made is to start making entertainment or we'll say more of the entertainment because it is out there and people are finding it the entertainment that we can watch not be preached to and not show men as idiots or just quote unquote toxic bringing back those traditional male values that we that basically hollywood has been showing for decades and it's a proven formula for success i agree and um the that the final note that article said that masculinity is lost i don't think it's lost i think as i said as long as we keep seeing you know the movies like extraction extraction to reacher mm -hmm. um things like that um it hasn't been lost. People want it. We're going to still go and see that and still being made. So have no fear. Uh, masculinity is still there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love how you said that. Perfect way to wrap this up. Where can people find you? Guys, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Positive Fandom, where I do all the parlay in the fandom. Right after this, I'm doing a review, a watch party of a movie called Anthropoid, which is about Operation Anthropoid. Uh, it's a um, about during World War II. It stars Chillian Murphy, where he plays a, um, I think it's a Czechoslovakian soldier who- Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. On yeah. um, one, uh -huh. uh, one of the, let's say the Germans during World War II, and it's successful. Mm -hmm. What happens, and then after that, I think I'm going to be on Uncivilized Scoundrels tonight. But tomorrow night, you and you and I, Lorraine, are going to be. Oh wait, not tomorrow night. Um, I don't know what we're doing. We're doing. Are we doing something on Saturday, or are you, or not? Um, no, not on, okay. <laughs> not on Saturday. <laughs> I'd take this Saturday off. Either on uh, PGS Trex or on Midnight Musings uh, this week. So um, yeah, that's what I'm up to, and and. Guys, thank you so much for everything. Lorena, I love this show so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, well, thank you. I love having you here. The folks out there love seeing us together. And of course, all you toxic males that watch our show. We're so thankful for all, all the compliments. We appreciate the heck out of you. Love <laughs> the heck out of you. Absolutely. Well, folks, of course, you can find me. Actually, I'm about to hop over to WW Pro's channel for his live show. Please check out thatparkplace.com where I, along with several other YouTubers, are going to be featured over on that webpage. There's articles, there's all kinds of stuff. So definitely go to that park place. Support that park place. Subscribe to WDW Pro. Subscribe to myself. Subscribe to her, mm, a positive fandom. And we will see you all next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.